skeletons, it's me, Danny, and welcome to How Macabre, your one stop for possibly educational, but most likely spooky videos. Today, I'm gonna need a pillow because this is gonna be extra spooky. Now, the reason why I'm gonna need a pillow for today's topic is because there is something going around on YouTube that is quite concerning and making me feel a little anxious. So there are people going around buying certain objects. That object, the Dibbit Box. So as I mentioned, the Dibbit Box. People on YouTube are purchasing them and also opening them. I'll tell you why that's bad. <laughs> so let me tell you what the Dibbit is. So first, the Dibbit is an evil or malicious spirit that is wandering the earth who is trapped between heaven and earth. Or hell and earth, depending on where you think you're going. So the name Dybbuk comes from the Hebrew root, Dybbuk, if I'm saying that right, spelling up there, you know, if you like, which means to cleave or cling. So that sort of explains its favorite pastime, which is possession. That is some scary shit. I mean, I don't know about you, but losing control of my body, that, no, no game, no game. And as you may or may not know, the concept of possession comes from the Bible, from God knows what section, uh, <laughs> from King Saul, who was supposedly possessed and terrified by the whole situation. Hey, who wouldn't be scared, right? And the idea of a divic made its first appearance around the 16th century. That's the latest literature they can find on it. And it didn't gain widespread popularity until about the 19th century, when, sorry if I butcher this, Russian Jewish author Shlom Zanvel Rappaport, also popularly known by his nom de plume S. Anxi. However, it's been since the 20th century that people have argued and said that Dybbuk possession is basically just schizophrenia or person suffering from hysteria. Either one, whichever comes first. Maybe even both. So the reason why everyone is going out and buying a Dybbuk box and opening them on YouTube, you can blame that on Kevin Manis. So Kevin Manis, he was one of the original owners of the most haunted Dybbuk box, which you can actually find in Zach from Ghost Adventures Museum right now. Don't recommend to go and see it or touch it. Don't touch it. Just don't. Not a good idea. So let me tell you a little bit about Kevin Mantis' story. So Kevin Mantis, can't Mantis, Manis. So let me tell you a little bit about Kevin Manis' story. So Kevin Manis is an antique collector and small business owner. So, of course, being an antique collector, he goes to estate sales. So he went to this one estate sale. So he saw a wine cabinet, and he decided to purchase it. You know, what's, what's wrong with a wine cabinet? There's, there's spirits inside. <laughs> spirits. <laughs> yeah. So the owner, the original owner of this wine cabinet had to warn him about this specific item. So she said that her grandmother was a Holocaust survivor. Her grandmother was the only sole survivor of the Holocaust in her family, and she escaped to Spain. That's where she came across this wine cabinet. And somewhere along the way, when she got to the United States, she brought a Dybbuk with it. So the Dybbuk is trapped inside this box, or wine cabinet, which, whichever you may. Let's just call it a Dybbuk box. And she told Kevin Manis, Whatever you do, don't open it. That her grandmother and her mother have told her strictly never to go near this box. Don't go near it. Don't touch it. Don't even look at it. You know, don't even talk about it, man. You know, that's, it's screwed up stuff. So, of course, Kevin Manis bought the box. And what did he do when he got home? He thought, hey, let's crack open this sucker and see what's inside. Maybe there's some spirits. Well, he didn't say the spirits, but spirits. Upon opening it, he found really strange items, including a wine goblet, a granite slab that said Shalom in Hebrew on it, a dried rosebud, a candlestick, two pennies from the 1920s, and two locks of hair. Not just any hair, human hair. One blonde, one brunette, wrapped in cord. And as soon as he opened it, strange things began happening. So first he left the wine cabinet in his office at work. So. He decided to go out for lunch or whatever, maybe a meeting, you know, whatever small business owners do. 
and he had one employee at the store at the time. So basically, he got a phone call that day. She called him, and she was terrified. She said there was a racket outside the main part of the store, that they were breaking things. She thought they were thieves or something, and she locked herself in the back room, too scared to go out. And the interesting thing is, this whole time that she was locked in there, it smelled like jasmine flowers. Hmm. So of course, man is thinking that something's wrong with the store, someone broke stuff, maybe some hooligans. He ran on over and nothing was wrong. I'm getting like chills, man. Nothing was wrong. So he unlocked the back door, saw her, and yeah, she was scared to death. She didn't come to work the next day. She, she quit after that. I would too. So he also said there was another incident where the FBI came and checked out all his electronical devices in the store. Yeah, I'm not really buying that. But anyways, not making any connection whatsoever to this box, Manus decided to re-gift it to his mother for her birthday. So upon receiving this beloved birthday gift, five, at least what they say, five minutes after receiving it, she had a stroke. Really, Manus? Luckily, she survived. Luckily, thank heaven she survived. She was partially blinded by the incident. But first thing she said to her son, bad present, take it away. I don't want this anymore. You know, she could feel the bad juju from this box. Come on, Manis, come on, get with the program. So next, still not making the connection with the box, he gave it to his sister. Do you really hate your family that much, Manis? So upon receiving the box, his sister said that she experienced bad nightmares the whole time it was in her position of an old lady, a hunched over old lady in her dreams, stalking her in her dreams. That's creepy. I'm getting chills. I got chills. They're multiplying. And she said every time she was near this wine cabinet, she always had this feeling of dread. And also, the doors just would never seem to stay closed they would constantly be opened. She would not open them. No one in the house would be opening them. So why were they opening? So of course his sister returned the box because she had the bad vibes. This box is bad juju. She knew it too. Next, he decided to give it to his brother. Really, Manus, really. So his brother and his wife also experienced very strange and eerie things with the box. And his brother said that he would also smell jasmine flowers, but his wife smelled cat urine. Along with that, they also experienced, you know, the paranormal, terrifying nightmares of an old lady. Why do they experience the same nightmares? And Mana said that also when he put it up for sale in his shop, a customer once bought it, but returned it instantly because yeah, they just had bad vibes as soon as they brought it home. So, you know, Best thing he could do was take it home and put it in his basement where everyone else puts their unwanted junk or unused junk. So once he brought this thing home that very night that he had put it in his basement, he was experiencing potent nightmares of the very same hunched over old hag stalking him. Now the scariest thing about this is that when he would wake up, he would sometimes find scratches and bruises on his body. Not only that, he starts seeing shadow figures everywhere. So of course he thought, enough is enough. Let's put this sucker up on eBay where everyone likes to buy haunted stuff. I'm gonna read to you the description he put on his eBay item. Let's read it. I would destroy this thing in a second, except I really don't have any understanding of what I may or may not be dealing with. I am afraid, and I do mean afraid that if I destroy the cabinet, whatever it is that seems to have come with the cabinet may just stay here with me. I have been told that there are people who shop on eBay that understand these kinds of things and specifically look for these kinds of items. If you are one of these people, please, please buy this cabinet and do whatever you do with a thing like this. Help me. Of course, people actually bid it on this thing. And the winner was, sorry if I butcher this, Losif 
Nietzsche. Nietzsche. In 2003. And he paid a whopping $140 for this thing. Congratulations, Nietzsche. Welcome to your nightmare. Now, upon purchasing this dip it box, Nietzsche, Nietzsche, Nietzsche. Nietzsche experienced a bunch of crazy paranormal shit right off the bat. He said that lights were flickering. Sometimes they would just not work or they would just die on you. Objects would be misplaced or moved around. Also strange smells such as the cat urine, and also blurry figures roaming around. He also claimed that his hair began falling out and he had an insect infestation. Now, if you haven't seen any horror movies that have any possession taking place, you should know these are signs. These are signs. Get rid of that shit. So of course, he did the same thing. Put it back up on eBay. Have people bid for it. This time it was purchased by a university museum curator who was interested in collecting strange paranormal things and religious paraphernalia. His name was Jason Haxton. And he didn't have as much luck either. He stated upon purchasing this item, he started experiencing a variety of health issues. Rash and hives all over his body, along with welts. He was also constantly fatigued and coughing. Coughing so much that he was coughing up blood which he also stated he had metallic taste in his mouth, which would probably be the blood. Because you know, blood tastes kind of metallic -y. He also said that his home was filled with frequent phantom scents, like the jasmine flowers and cat urine. Intrigued by this, he... Okay, I, I keep saying stuff. This is freaking me out. Intrigued by this, he took it to a Jewish artifact specialist. Her name was Rebecca... Her name was Rebecca... Edery, 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 Rebecca Edery, who determined it was a sacred relic for imprisoning a spirit. Wasn't that on the eBay listing? So Haxton decided to then take it to a Jewish rabbi and ask, how do I put the sucker back in its box? So Haxton also actually even published a book in 2011 on the Dibbit box, if you're interested in reading. But what's it called? It's, it's, let's see, it's called... The Divot Box! With an I, not a Y. And at one time he had a website devoted to it, but it's ceased to exist. He refuses to answer any questions any longer about the Divot Box. But anyways, good news is apparently he successfully was able to trap it back in the box and since then has donated it to, again, Zach's Museum. If you don't know who Zach from Ghost Adventures is, go check out Ghost Adventures. It's a pretty entertaining show, especially around Halloween. I know that's what I'm probably going to be watching. And it's also highly influenced the movie The Possession in, from 2012. So if you're interested, you know, hey, check out that movie. Don't go on eBay and buy the box. Go to watch the movie first, you know just in case you want to see what it's like. Now you would think getting rid of this box and having it in a museum would help, you know, save humanity and all, but it has not. For if you just touch the box, you are pretty much cursed by the Dybbuk or a Dybbuk. So just look at recent current events. Post Malone, famous rapper, he was visiting Zach's museum and he, although he did not actually touch the box, if you watch the video, he was touching Zack while Zack touched the box. So, possibly the energy traveled through him. Who knows? Usually they have a protective case covering the box so that the entities can't escape and, you know, haunt or cling on to people. This wasn't the case this time, though. They actually took the lid off and it was open. So, you know, in case you ever have a one-on-one -on -one tour at Zach's Museum or any haunted museum, it's not recommended that if they have any open exhibits to attend to them. So now that we've talked about what a Dybbuk is and the Dybbuk box itself, let's check that out on eBay and see. Okay, so let's start by looking up a Dybbuk. Divot box. eBay. Let's look. 
Um, hmm. Let's see what we got. Oh. Oh, that's three minutes. That's, yeah, that's going to be gone by the time you guys check this out. So let's check one that's still going to be here. One haunted coin. That's not a Dybbuk. Let's go back. Haunted Dybbuk box here. Insta. Wow. That's creepy. Ooh, okay, so uh, three viewed per hour. Wow, that's a hot topic. It's $40 US dollars. You can see my Japanese yen. I live in Japan, for those who don't know. Uh, 4,501 one yen. Uh, may not ship to Japan. Good, because I don't want it. But let's look at the pictures. So, oh, oh, that is creepy. That's really, really creepy. So, okay, I guess that's that's the estate. There's more. Wow, there's a lot of pictures. That's a creepy house. That's actually really beautiful. But um, nope, never mind. Inside's gone to hell. Just like the inside of the box. Let's read the item description. This is not a toy, and not for individuals who do not respect spirits or the occult. If you purchase this divot box, do not open it. If at any point you begin to feel physical manifestations of what is attached to this box, do not throw it away or damage it in any way. Respect is critical, and you must treat it well until it leaves your hands and home. I currently have it stored in my apartment storage room in a box and surrounded by salt. For those who don't know, salt is a purifying item that you can use against spirits, anything malicious. Um, check out Hocus Pocus, I mean, it's all a circle, yeah. I removed it to quickly take photos for this listing. This has seemed to reverse the physical effects it is having on me. This box was recovered from a crane sanitarium in historic Richmond, Indiana. This stunning building has broken down over the course of the last 100 years and is now generally regarded as an eyesore. My mother is a real estate agent and was able to get a hold of the keys, knowing that I've always wanted to tour the place. I've posted a couple pictures of some rooms, which shows how run down it is. This box was found thrown in the basement, among a few other things. Since no one owned the building at the time, and I've always loved anything creepy, spooky, haunted, looking, I took all of them home as a souvenir. What a mistake that was. Wow. I didn't get any bad vibes from it initially, over a few weeks, I began experiencing weird physical phenomenon. I developed tinnitus. 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 Screw it. I developed tinnitus, which would get worse when I was in my room with the box. I began having incredibly vivid, gruesome dreams, and I would wake up sleepwalking. I began feeling horribly nauseous just looking at the box and felt like I was being stared at constantly. At times, it would also smell putrid, but it would completely go away moments later. I never heard any voices or children laughing. Nothing cliche. Nothing cliche. It was the deafening silence that I began to notice whenever I was around it. I tried to burn sage. Didn't work. I tried a special banishment purification ritual. Didn't work. If you gently rattle it, you can gently rattle it. Are they, is this like, you know, little kid on Christmas day with the presents? It's just like, oh, like Jerry, what's inside? Kind of, why would you rattle it? I mean, I guess curiosity and all, but that sounds like such a bad idea. Anyways, if you gently rattle it, you can hear something inside. Not sure what it is. I just want it out of my house. There appears to be a crack on the bottom of the box, like it's buckling from water damage or something. 
Nothing is leaking out of the box though, thankfully. Again, do not mess around with this if you aren't knowledgeable or skilled with spirit attachment. I didn't respect it for what it was and now I realize what a mistake that was. Okay, and per eBay policy, this is being sold as a novelty and you may not experience the same thing that I did. Buyer is purchasing at their own risk. Buyer understands and agrees that they are purchasing a box and nothing else. Buyer also agrees that the seller will not be held responsible for the level of activity they may or may not experience upon ownership of this item. Yep, so that is a haunted divot box on eBay. Don't buy it. Oh, well, although he does have 100% positive feedback, so, you know, he's not lying apparently. At least he's sending you something. Something that may or may not be haunted. Well, that's left me feeling a little uneasy. If you like what you saw today, consider stabbing that like button and murdering the subscribe button down below and become a skeleton in the closet. And if life doesn't get in the way, maybe, just maybe, you'll see a spooky video every day. I love you, my skeletons. I love you to your bones. That's the doorbell. See you soon. Spooky, scary skeletons and shivers down your spine. Shrieking skulls will shock your soul and seal your doom tonight. Spooky, scary skeletons. Speak with